Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the MLGP. My name is John, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, who's currently the Head of Operations at XL Esports, and former Operations Director for Overactive Media, Grant Russo. Welcome to the show, Grant. Hi, John. So, I was hoping in this short interview, you could uh, enlighten me, uh, and the many listeners of the show, to esports as a whole, and uh, your personal experiences, and journey to where you are today. So, firstly... I wanted to ask, how did you uh, first become involved in the esports industry? Yeah, so it was a, it was a bit of a, a unique one. I've always been a bit of a gamer, um, as many are. And in my final year of uni, uh, uh, a different bunch of friends uh, on the course who showed me a game called League of Legends. And then further showed me what an esport is for that game. So showed me what, what's now the, the European League Championship. And um, right. I kind of just got completely addicted to the whole idea of it. I think it was more of a uh, sports-esque competitive feel that kind of got me watching and involved in it so I started watching it and I thought you know what I kind of like this so I finished uni and I had a job lined up for like the following September so I had like this sort of three four month break you know kind of summer holidays thing uh, ready before the new job started so I thought rather than sit around and do nothing why don't I just have a go at like making an esports team having absolutely no clue what that meant or involved <laughs> that's a pretty and, big idea uh, yeah, like it was, so I stayed up. I remember I stayed up at uni for like a few extra weeks when it finished and done my degree. And I just sat up every night just trying to find players for a team, trying to make it happen. Came up with a name, came up with a brand that entered us into like the UK scene for yeah. League of Legends. It was honestly just like on the fly, have a go. Yeah. And it turns yeah. out not many people at the time were doing that. So yeah. it was uh, it was actually possible to put something together. And um, yeah, four, four years later, here I am. Wow. So. Yeah, very entrepreneurial. It was it was pretty crazy looking back at it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, stay, staying up at uni, working your working your butt off, but at least yeah. it's it, it worked out all in the end. So great. No, exactly. I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Um, I also wanted uh, to rack your brains on uh, what you believe uh, have been like the biggest changes since you started, just as uh, your own little small team, and now uh, your big big manager boy. Uh, <laughs> how the industry uh, uh, has changed for you. So I think sort of there's been two key things happen. Firstly, um, franchising has come in for a lot of the major esports. So sort of the American model that um, ensures, you know, no relegation and sort of a, a shared revenue system. And whilst that's not a very popular model in Europe, what it does allow is sustainability because it allows teams to truly invest into that esport, knowing that they won't lose the viewership or lose the funds because yeah. of relegation or something like that. So a lot of sustainability coming through that franchising and, and a lot of money thrown into that as well. So kind of the second part is, is just the serious levels of investment and the more traditional investors coming in, sports yeah. investors, technology investors, not just people who like the idea, but actually people who have grown industries in the past especially within sports so you are seeing a lot more traditional uh, 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 sports teams start to buy teams or enter the scene at least especially yeah. America again but slowly fairly to Europe you know one of the teams we play uh, uh, in our first weeks of, of, of the league championship is Schalke you know the famous football team oh, yeah. which you've got a League of Legends team and, and there's a few PSG have entered the market oh, wow. quite a few UK teams have entered the FIFA market so mm-hmm. I think you're just seeing that increase in the level of professionalism that comes with it as well yeah yeah, um, yeah. I was gonna say, I uh, I occasionally watch F one esports uh, yeah, to, be, yeah. to get in the first season. Everyone was just completely on their own terms, and now as I think it's the third year or fourth year now, they're all, like, basically all of the F one teams, F two teams have all now got involved, investing, like getting yeah. all their players for their specific team, and stuff like that. So I it find was it crazy because. Really we just had like um, so the team that won the F1 championship e- esports championship this year I think it was Red Bull um, it, was, it was just like I forget who they were it was, yeah, it's like Red Bull work uh, with G2 which is a well known esports team so they boot camp to our place so right. we've had a whole bunch of eSIM machines sitting in our in our <laughs> office for the past six weeks I, I had a go recently and it, they, they are nuts yeah they're things. pretty amazing aren't they I've, I've actually got one of those yeah. in my university room I play it a little oh bit oh my but... god I'm not quite you, you good enough to be able to do it. And you're like, oh, that looks easy. And then yeah. you sit on it and you're like, oh my God. Yeah, 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 it's quite tough. But no, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and uh, finally, final question. Uh, do you have any predictions as to how you think the industry is going to sort of adapt and evolve in the future? It's, it's hard to say. I mean, the, the industry's gone from quite literally nothing to, to this level of investment in sort of seven, eight ish years. 
yeah. you know, faster than probably any other industry around. Yeah, so to great. say like, oh, where will the industry be in five's time? Well, that's double its lifespan. And yeah. if it's growing this fast, who knows? I mean, it's going to continue growing. I think you're going to see a lot more localization techniques used. Currently, esports is very online. It's very global. You know, if you're a team, you have fans all over the world. And it's hard to monetize that. It's hard to, you know, Yes, you have those people watch your games, but it's, it's perhaps hard to interact with those fandoms sometimes. Yeah. So what I think you'll do is almost, a bit like traditional sports, is teams now that they've expanded their reach, they'll almost try and shrink that reach to be more local, well-known areas that they identify with, you know, just like a, a football team would be yeah. with their local area. Yeah, I understand. Um, sports teams will do the same. That, that, that's something that will definitely happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, unfortunately, can't really predict much. Yeah. you just got to kind of go with it at this time. Yeah, <laughs> just ride the wave, really. Exactly. No, that that's all. Uh, that's all very interesting. I, had, I hadn't thought of that. But um, I mean, I can predict that Excel Esports will be the biggest UK brand by a mile. Of course. Well, can you? Okay. <laughs> Just a cheeky little plug there. Just a cheeky little plug. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's completely completely uh, justified. Um, well, sadly, that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much, Grant, for giving yes. up your precious time to be on the show. Uh, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavours. Uh, hopefully you'll, we will be on the biggest team uh, absolutely but uh, yeah that is all for now thank you very much everyone for listening and goodbye